I'm Alan Ng. I'm with Zoriana Kitt. And today on the Film Threat Review Show, we are reviewing Helmut Newton and The Bad and the Beautiful. <laughs> All right, today we've got a documentary about famed photographer of the 60s, 70s, 80s to today, um, Helmut Newton. Um, I've never heard of him, but you've we, never uh, heard of him, really? I've never heard of him. You know, I that's that's the thing that that struck me throughout uh, watching it is how out of the loop I am with uh, with 60s, 70s high fashion photography. <laughs> How oh, come I'm looking at you? I wouldn't think that, Alan. Oh, yeah, Tommy Bahama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I grew up in that era. I, I, I somehow should have made connections with what was going on then. But uh, this is, I mean, this is, I, I certainly have heard of Grace Jones, who appears uh, quite extensively in, in the documentary. Uh, I mean, what is your, how, how familiar are you with? Well, Tommy? I remember pouring through Vogue magazine and seeing his photographs. He was a very, very distinct photographer. Um, everything was, he had a lot of strong Amazonian type women who were in there, but they were often doing something that was more along the lines of, I mean, some may call it, you know, borderline pornography or s &M, maybe a little misogynistic. They, there was, they were very provocative. This wasn't like, her Brits or a Richard Avedon, if you even know who those guys are, but he, he, <laughs> those guys were, were more high fashion beauty photographers. Helmet was there to provoke, to disturb, to, to cause people to think. And his photos did provoke outrage. Luckily for him, Anna Winter, the editor in chief of Vogue gave him a platform. And so mm. he was featured in the pages of that magazine and he has photographed so many celebrities and supermodels, which is what makes this documentary interesting. Even if you don't know the guy because they appear as talking heads. Yeah. We've got everyone from Charlotte Rampling to Grace Jones to uh, Claudia Schiffer to- uh, So there's, there's a lot of recognizable faces, all of whom are talking about him uh, so don't worry about not knowing and plus the documentary will show you so much yeah. about him. You, you they show you a lot there's there's <laughs> a lot going on I mean one of the things that that I thought of while watching it was um, I don't know if you remember in uh, this is spinal tap when Fran Drescher is describing the album pr um, pitch that the band had of the the woman on all fours naked with a glove in her in her <laughs> face okay. um that, that was those are the images I, I got and then watching it i mean there's there's copious amounts of nudity um, yeah in, okay. in at least his photography but you know um, you but what struck me, sorry go ahead didn't mean to interrupt but yeah what, what struck me was the that it the like when i think of getting nude or being nude there <laughs> you the, think the, of getting the, nude <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> But uh, you know, it, it, there's there's a level of fear that that you may portray, or a, a level of object, you know, being objectified. Yeah. But here, the the women that he has uh, that he he photographs, they're always in a, a position of power. They're always in a a uh, they always look like they're they're natural and they're powerful, and um, and in, in fact, it's the men who he may, if he ever decides to include them, that are in a subservient position. Yeah, agreed. And then when you see the outtakes uh, of him photographing these women, they're actually having a lot of fun. There's there's this scene where he's on top of the marmont photographing this naked model, and he's he's telling her to position her face a certain way or this way or that way, and and they're laughing. And then of course we later learned that he was happily married to this wonderful woman June, and she was actually the 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 brains behind the artistry and and mm -hmm. the the big mama bear for all these photo shoots as well and surprisingly for a guy who was that provocative he he was quite kind of like an ordinary kind of guy there was nothing really kinky about him in real life mm -hmm. he was he was quite normal uh, for lack of a better word yeah you you definitely get the sense that he's an artist that he he looks for imagery he looks for uh, you know, the, the, he's looking for a specific look as opposed to being titillating or, or erotic at all, and yeah. uh, I think that's what most people appreciate about him. And 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 they also appreciate his sense of humor. Um, there's there's well, a moment where he's uh, 
you know, he's putting a chicken in high heels. <laughs> yeah. See, to to be honest, personally, Helmut Helmut Newton is not my taste. I do remember all of his Vogue spreads, and I do remember they're not the ones that I would rip out and put on my wall. I didn't necessarily care for them, but I was fascinated by them. So, so his artistry didn't speak to me as an individual in any capacity, but. But I, uh, uh, it, it, they, they were, they, they were art. They were all mm -hmm. art, and um, and to learn that this is a man who had survived um, uh, Nazi Hitler, Germany. Rat, and all of that stuff as well, and how he uh, moved to Australia, and then how he started out as a photographer, and all those, all those roots, and then of course. Of course, having a entanglement with uh, the Chateau Marmont, which is where he stayed um, several months out of the year. And he lived there and ultimately met his death there. So if people aren't even familiar with him as a photographer, most people do remember his tragic death when he lost control of his yeah. car and just careened straight into the wall there. It's amazing how the, that the ending just kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, so like, the one thing that, that struck me, though, is... You know how would how would Helmut um, how would how would he do today <laughs> as a photographer? Um, you know, I, I think you could I think you could arguably claim that he was misogynistic that he was uh, Susan Sontag in the documentary uh, just calls him out on it right then and there. We see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you have and it's interesting to see all the famous people he photographed. Um, just kind of just defend him and defend, uh, you know, and, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of like on the board. I mean, I always lean on the side of, well, art is art and this is, this is his art and he has every right in the world to express it. Um, it it's just, yeah, at the same time, there's this lens now that everything goes through, you know, would we be canceling him at this moment? Sure, exactly. There is that sort of thing. Like, is, is that style out of fashion? Like there's a, there's um, a fashion spread of, of him with this beautiful model. Um, she, she's in a wheelchair at one point. She's got these metal crutches at another point. And at the time there was a lot of outrage because people felt that he was making fun of uh, disabled folks. So stuff like that today could very well not be politically correct because of the pendulum has swung so far the other way. But at the same time, you, you know, a guy like that could very well take today's technologies and today's the things that are uh, here today to make a statement on. You don't know what he would do with, you know, let's say a Black Lives Matter campaign, or if he would do something political about wearing masks or not wearing masks. I, I kind of feel like he would adapt to that mm -hmm. and end up doing something provocative around uh, along those lines. Okay, so let's get into it as a documentary. Um, I Personally, I found it engaging. Um, you know, I think, you know, I, I the, the what I like about documentaries is it exposes me to a world that I, I may not know. Even though I grew up during this time, I had no clue. And I his his photography and there's a lot of it in there. It's so compelling that it's hard not to 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 turn away. And his story, you know, of just this seemingly normal guy, but but you do get a sense of how he how he does his art, how he looks at life and and what he intends to do in every steps behind the camera. Yeah, I just, I love learning about the man behind the art. I, I knew the art, never knew the man. And so for me, it, it was compelling enough to sit through and watch it. And it's also not very long. So it, it's it's something that you can, that's it's easily digestible, especially with all those celebrity talking heads. Yeah, so you recommend it? Yeah, I do. Uh, and I do as well. And uh, uh, Helmut Newton, the Bad and the Beautiful, is playing in virtual cinemas uh, now. Uh, I'm Alan Ng. I'm with Zoriana Kitt. And this is the Film Threat Review Show.